Hello coders, I welcome you all. In this video, we are going to discuss our next machine learning project, Employee Churn Prediction Using Machine Learning. Using real world data set available on Kegel. You can download this data set from Kegel or from my GitHub account. Link is given in the description of this video. So let's get started. As you know, in a dynamic and competitive business environment, employee retention is a crucial aspect of an organization's growth and success. So the objective of this project is to develop a machine learning model that predicts employee churn means likelihood of an employee leaving the organization. By identifying potential churners in advance, organizations can take proactive measures to retain valuable employees, improve employee satisfaction and optimize workforce planning. For this project, we will be utilizing column transformer and scikit-learn pipeline which helps us deploy our model more easily. Using a pipeline is a great approach for our machine learning project as it simplifies the whole process. So let's begin our project. Let's first import the libraries that we require. We will import others when they are needed. So let me first import pandas as pd. Let me import numpy as np. Also let me import warnings. Let me import from sklearn dot preprocessing let me import standard scalar one hot encoder and ordinal encoder from sklearn dot pipeline let me import pipeline from sklearn dot compose let me import column transformer from sklearn dot linear model let me import logistic regression from sklearn dot model underscore selection let me import train test split from sklearn dot matrix let me import accuracy score precision score and recall score from sklearn dot tree let me import decision tree classifier from sklearn dot ensemble let me import random forest classifier from XGBoost, let me import XGB classifier. Let me execute this cell. As you can see here, our required libraries are successfully imported. As I said, we will import others when they are needed. So first, let me disable warnings. So for that, we have to write warnings that we have already imported over here. Dot filter warnings. And here we have to pass ignore. Let me execute this cell. So this code disables warning in Python. Now let's load our data set as pandas data frame. So let me write pd which is pointing over here. We have already imported pandas as pd. Dot read underscore csv. Because our data set is available in dot csv file format with name hr underscore data set dot csv. As I say, you can download this data set from Kegel or from my github account link is given in the description of this video so let me assign it to one variable data let me execute this cell as you can see now our data set is successfully loaded as pandas data frame so let me write data dot sample and here let me pass file so in pandas this sample method is used to randomly select rows from a pandas data frame here we are selecting random five rows from the data set let me execute this cell as you can see over here at every run, we will get random five rows from our data set. It helps in getting a quick view of the data that you can see over here. As you can see, our data set contains these many features. This is our response target, also called as dependent variable that we are going to predict. So this is our first feature available in our data set. Satisfaction level, the level of satisfaction the employee has towards their job and the organization. Next. Last evaluation, the evaluation score of the employee from the last performance review. Next, number underscore project means number of projects. The number of projects the employee is involved in. Next, average underscore monthly underscore hours. Average monthly hours. The average number of hours the employee works per month. Next, time underscore spend underscore company means time spent in the company the number of years the employee has spent in the company next work underscore accident means work accident 
whether the employee has had a work related accident it contains two values 1 and 0 1 for yes 0 for no as i said this is our target variable left whether the employee left the company again it contains two values 1 and 0 1 for left 0 for not left next promotion underscore last underscore five years promotion in the last five years whether the employee was promoted in the last five years again it contains two values one and zero one for yes zero for no next departments the department the employee is associated with like support sales management r d etc now our final feature salary the salary level of the employee it contains three values low medium and high so using these many features we are going to predict this one left as i say it contains two values one and zero one means employee will leave the organization zero means employee will stay in the organization as i say it contains two values one for left and zero for not left means binary values zero and one so this is binary classification problem now let's check column names using data dot columns let me execute this cell as you can see here this particular column departments here you can see space that we have to remove so for that let me write data dot rename we are going to rename this particular column departments and here columns equal to let me copy this particular column including space let's rename this with departments you can use any other name as well to modify our existing data frame let me set in place to true let me execute this cell let me check as you can see over here we have successfully renamed this particular column departments that you can see over here as you can see for this project i have mentioned some questions so let's solve them one by one so here we have to find shape of our data set means number of rows and number of columns available in our data set so for that we have to use shape attribute of pandas data frame let me execute this cell as you can see output is python tuple with two values first and second so these many rows are available in our data set and these many columns are available in our data set so this way we can find shape of our data set means number of rows and number of columns available in our data set using shape attribute of pandas data frame now next so here we have to get information about our data set like total number of rows total number of columns data types of each column and memory requirement that we can do with just one method info method of pandas data frame let me execute this cell as you can see here total we are having this many rows with this indexes total we are having this many columns as you can see here column names and data types for each and every columns so we are having this many nominal values in this particular column satisfaction level we are having this many nominal values in this particular column last evaluation likewise as you can see here d types colon in our data set two columns with floating point data type six columns with integer data type two columns with object data type and memory usage for our data set that you can see over here so this way we can get information about our data set like total number of rows total number of columns data types of each column and memory requirement using info method of pandas data frame so now next here we have to get overall statistics about our data set so for that we have to use describe method of pandas data frame let me execute this cell so in pandas describe method is used to generate descriptive statistics of a data frame it provides summary statistics such as count mean means average value standard deviation minimum maximum and quartile values for the numerical column in the pandas data frame that you can see over here let me take this particular column satisfaction level so count means number of rows available in this particular column satisfaction level average value of this particular column standard deviation of this particular column minimum value available in this particular column satisfaction level and as i say these are quartile values means percentile values so in this particular column satisfaction level 25 percent values are below this particular value 50 percent values are below this particular value 
75% values are below this particular value in this particular column satisfaction level and maximum value available in this particular column satisfaction level same for others so this way we can get overall statistics about the data set using describe method of pandas data frame that you can see over here so now next here we have to check for null values in the data set so for that let me write data and we have to use is null method of pandas data frame let me execute this cell as you can see here output is pandas data frame with boolean values let me perform sum of true values as you can see here output is all zeros it means there are no missing values in the data set that you can see over here so this way we can check for missing values in our data set that you can see over here so now next taking care of duplicate values so for that let me write data dot we have to use duplicated method of pandas data frame dot any let me execute this cell so this way we can check for duplicated rows available in our data set that you can see over here as you can see here output is true indicates that there are duplicated rows present in our data set so now let's display duplicated rows so for that let me copy this data dot duplicated let me execute this cell as you can see here output is panda series with boolean values let's pass this to our pandas data frame let me execute this cell as you can see here total this many rows are duplicated in our data set so now let's drop this duplicated rows so for that we have to write data which is pointing to our pandas data frame and we have to use drop underscore duplicates method of pandas data frame to modify our existing data frame let me assign back let me execute this cell let me check data dot shape as you can see here shape of our data frame after removing duplicated values let me check shape before removing duplicated values so let me copy this let me paste it over here minus number of rows after removing duplicated values let me execute this cell as you can see here we have successfully dropped this many duplicated rows that you can see over here so this way we can handle duplicated values in our data set that you can see over here so now let me check our target variable left let me use value counts method on it let's plot this values using bar plot let me execute this cell as you can see over here more number of samples in not left as compared to left so we can say that our data set is imbalanced what is imbalanced data set imbalanced data set refers to those type of data sets where the target class has an uneven distribution of observations that you can see over here one class label has a very high number of observations you can see here four zeros and other class has very low number of observations here you can see four ones so in this project first we will check performance of our models please remember it is very dangerous to use only accuracy as a performance metric on imbalanced data set we have to check other performance metrics like precision and recall as well if we not get proper value of this matrix then only we will perform under or over sampling if we get proper value of this matrix we will not perform under or over sampling so now next here we are going to store feature matrix in x and response or target also called as dependent variable in vector y in short we are going to store independent variables in matrix x in our dependent variable in vector y so let me write x data dot drop and columns is equal to left so here we are going to store our independent variables in matrix x that's why here we are dropping our dependent variable left let me check as you can see our independent variables now let's store our dependent variable in vector y let me check as you can see over here so we have successfully stored our feature matrix means our independent variables in matrix x and our dependent response or target variable in vector y that you can see over here now next column transformer and pipeline first what is column transformer in general we often perform various pre processing task on different columns separately right a column transformer is a method of combining these pre processing steps required for different columns 
into a single box or package that's all this is a column transformer let me show you this let's create column transformer as you can see we have already imported column transformer that you can see over here column transformer that we have imported from sklearn.compose so now let's use column transformer so let me write column transformer and here we have to use transformers parameter of this column transformer in square bracket we have to use tuple let me give name number let me check our data set let me display first row only so we are going to use standard scalar for all the numerical columns available in our data set so let me copy and let me paste it over here let me copy this let me paste it over here also this one i am taking all the numerical features so we can standardize them using standard scalar also this one this one as well all the numerical features done so if feature have different scales that you can see over here number of project and average monthly hours having different scales so some of model might give more weight to features with larger scale so standardizing ensures that all features are equally important during model training so that's why we are using standard scalar on numerical features now next let me write nominal so for nominal categorical features we are going to use one hot encoder on this particular column departments which is nominal categorical column so what is nominal feature nominal features are those without any inherent order or ranking like department that you can see over here with no order and we want to prevent the model from thinking one department is greater than another so that's why here we have used one hot encoder for nominal categorical feature like department now let's use ordinal encoder so for that let me write ordinal and ordinal encoder on this particular column salary which is ordinal categorical variable so what is ordinal feature ordinal features have a clear order or ranking that you can see over here in this salary column low medium and high right ordinal encoder converts these categories into numerical values while preserving the order so here we want to preserve order in this particular salary column which is ordinal categorical column so that's why here we have used ordinal encoder so what to do for other columns which are not mentioned in this column transformer let me press shift tab to check the string of this column transformer as you can see here reminder is by default set to drop by default other columns which are not mentioned in column transformer will be drop but we don't want to drop them so let me copy this and let me paste it over here in place of drop let me set it to pass through we want to keep other columns as it is in the data set so let me execute this cell sorry here comma sorry for that let me execute this cell once again as you can see here we have successfully created column transformer that you can see over here as i said a column transformer is a method of combining different pre processing steps required for different columns into a single box or package that you can see over here one box for all pre processing task that we required on different columns that you can see over here this is a column transformer that you can see over here now let's build machine learning pipeline so what is a machine learning pipeline a machine learning pipeline is a series of interconnected processing steps where the output of one step serves as the input for the next step all these steps are combined into a one box to streamline the entire machine learning process let me show you this as you know we have already imported pipeline from sklearn.pipeline that you can see over here now pipeline in pipeline we have to give step name let me write pre processor you can use any other name as well so this is our pre processor so let me create instance of this column transformer as pre processor is equal to this statement let me execute this cell once again let me copy this instance let me paste it over here 
and that we have to pass all the steps in square bracket like this in couple so this is our first step in the pipeline now next model let me first use logistic regression that we have already imported let me create instance of this pipeline with name pipeline let me execute this cell as you can see here we have successfully created our pipeline this is first step and this is second step so output of this first step become input to the next step this one we can also visualize this created pipeline using sklearn so let me import from sklearn let me import set config module let me execute this cell and let me use set config and here we have to set this display parameter to diagram let me execute this cell now let me write pipeline this one instance of our created pipeline let me execute this cell as you can see over here this way we can visualize our created pipeline you can see over here column transformer and our model you can see output of this column transformer becomes input to our model now next so here we are going to split our data set into the training set and the testing set to evaluate the performance of our machine learning models so we have already imported train test split so let me use train test split here we have to pass our independent variables and our dependent variable that we have stored in x and y and let me set test size to 0.20 we are keeping aside 20 percent data for testing purpose and let me set random state to 42 and here as i said our data set is imbalanced so we have to use stratify parameter of this train test split let me set it to y which is our dependent variable so this stratify parameter ensures that the class distribution in the original data set is preserved in both training and testing subsets that's why here we are using stratify is equal to y so as you can see in our data set y is binary categorical variable with values 0 and 1 let's assume that y contains 25 percent of ones and 75 percent of zero that you can see over here so we have set this stratify parameter to y hence with our target variable ensure that y train and y test contain 25 percent of ones and 75 percent of zero means the class distribution is approximately that of our y that's why here we are using stratify is equal to y as i say this stratify is equal to y ensure that the class distribution in the original data set is preserved in both training and testing subsets hope all of you are clear with this and let me assign this to x train x test y train and y test and here you can see four parts but two subsets one for training and one for testing so we are going to train our created pipeline on x train and y train on our training set we will perform prediction using x test our unseen samples and we will compare our predicted result with y test let me execute this cell now let's train our created pipeline on our training set x train and y train let me execute this cell as you can see here we have successfully trained our created pipeline on our training set using this fit method now let's perform prediction using our created pipeline on our unseen samples available in x underscore test and let me assign it to one variable y pred is equal to this statement let me execute this cell now let's check accuracy score let me press shift tab as you can see here here we have to pass actual values and predicted values by our model so as you know our actual values are available inside y underscore test and predicted values by our model inside y underscore pred let me execute this cell as you can see here logistic regression is around 83 percent accurate on this particular data set as i said our data set is imbalanced so we can't rely only on accuracy score we have to check precision score as well again here we have to pass actual values and predicted values by our model as you can see here precision score is around 52 percent let me check recall score as well again here we have to pass actual values and predicted values by our model as you can see here recall score is 21 percent so as compared to accuracy score 
these scores are very low. This is just because of our data set is imbalanced. So we have to use other machine learning models as well. So in place of using different machine learning models one by one, let's combine all our previous steps into one function. So let me create one function with name model underscore scorer. You can give any other name as well. Here we will pass model name and model instance and let's copy our created pipeline. Let me copy this and let me paste it over here. Let me copy this train test split as well. Let me copy and let me paste it over here in our function. Also this one and also this one predict also accuracy score as well. Let me copy. Let me paste it over here. Precision score as well. Let me copy paste it over here and recall score as well. Let me copy and paste it over here and let's create one empty Python list just to store accuracy, precision and recall score and first output dot append model name. So first we are appending model name to this empty list and output dot append accuracy score to our created list this one also output dot append precision score also output dot append recall score we are appending this score to our created empty list with name output and return out Good. Let me execute this cell. So I think we have successfully created our function to evaluate different machine learning models. So in place of this specific model logistic regression, let me pass model this one. Now let's create one Python dictionary with different models. So first LOG for logistic regression we have already used, but let me use once again precision tree classifier random forest classifier and also let me use xgb xgb classifier let me execute this cell we have successfully created python dictionary with model name and model instance now let me write for model underscore name and model in model underscore dictionary that just we have created this one model underscore output dot append so let me create one empty list model underscore output so model underscore output dot append we have to call our created function this one model underscore scorer and here we have to pass model name and model instance this one model name and model instance that you can see over here model name and model instance let me execute this cell sorry here we have to use items. Let me execute this cell. Now let me check this list model underscore output. Let me copy. Let me paste it over here. Let me execute this cell as you can see over here. First we have to end this. Let me execute this cell. These as well. This and these as well. Now we are getting proper values for accuracy, precision and recall score that you can see over here. From this output we can see that random forest is the best model for our data set that you can see over here. So we are going to use random forest in production. So please remember we have used this train test split just to evaluate the performance of machine learning models. But for production we have to train our best model random forest on entire data set. But here we have used pipeline. So let's train our pipeline with random forest on our entire data set. So first let me copy our column transformer and let me paste it over here. Let me execute this cell. Now let's copy our created pipeline and let me paste it over here. Now let's replace this logistic regression with random forest classifier. Let me execute this cell. Now let's train our pipeline on our entire data set that you can see over here. We have successfully trained our pipeline with our best model random forest on entire data set that you can see over here. And as you can see here, I have created a sample data using pandas data frame to perform prediction using our best model. Let me execute this cell. Now let me write pipeline dot 
predict and sample this one let me execute this cell as you can see here output is one means this employee with this data may leave the organization so let me assign it to one variable result is equal to this statement and let me write if and else if result equal to one and let me write an employee may leave the organization else let me print an employee may stay with the organization let me execute this cell as you can see here with this data employee may leave the organization that you can see over here so this way we can perform prediction using our created pipeline with our based model that you can see over here now next let's save our based model so again and again training is not required and we can perform prediction using our saved pipeline so for that let me import pickle and let me write with open let me open this file you can give any other name as well with w b s f and let me write pickle dot dump to save our model pipeline comma f pipeline which is pointing to our pipeline this one let me execute this cell so we have successfully saved our pipeline so let's perform prediction using our saved pipeline this one so let me write with open we have to open this file this pickle file in rb read binary mode as f and let me use pickle dot load and f this one and let me assign it to one variable pipeline underscore saved is equal to this statement let me execute this cell we have successfully loaded our saved pipeline now we can perform prediction using our saved pipeline exactly same way so let me copy this paste it over here in place of this pipeline let me replace this with pipeline underscore saved again we are performing prediction on this sample this one let me execute this cell as you can see over here with this data employee may leave the organization that you can see over here so this way we can save our pipeline and this way we can perform prediction using our save pipeline that you can see over here now next as you can see here I have created both desktop apps and web app for this project as you can see here GUI 1 and GUI 2 so if you have single employees data you can use our first desktop app this one if you have multiple employees data in CSV file and you want to perform multiple predictions at once you can use our second GUI this one also I have created web app for single prediction and prediction using test file means using csv file if you want to perform multiple predictions at once you can use this one prediction using paste file here you can upload csv file i will show you shortly you can download this code from my github account link is given in the description of this video let me show you our first desktop app this one as i said if you have single employees data you can use our first desktop app let me enter values let me press this predict button as you can see here with this data employee may leave the organization as we have predicted that you can see over here employee may leave the organization so as i said if you have single employees data you can use this desktop app let me show you our another desktop app let me close this and let me run this code gui2 as you can see here let me press this button open csv here i have created this test file let me press open and let me save it to our desktop result 2 let me press save button as you can see here file saved successfully let me show you this file as you can see here predicted target so these values are predicted and added by our model that you can see over here so if this values employee may leave the organization with this values employee may stay with the organization that you can see over here so if you have multiple employees data in csv file and you want to perform multiple predictions at once you can use this second gui that you can see over here and you will get output like this now let's use our web apps let me click on this single prediction let me select data randomly let me press this predict button as you can see here with this data employee may stay with the organization that you can see over here now let me select predict using test file using this you can perform multiple predictions at once let me click on this let me select our test file as you can see over here predicted values by our model that you can see over here also our data is successfully saved on our drive 
that you can see over here. So this way user can perform prediction using our desktop apps and our web app that you can see over here. Hope you like this video. Please don't forget to subscribe this channel. If you like this video, smash that like button. Thank you very much for watching this video. Take care. Bye bye. See you in the next video.